has been a great pleasure and, a, and an honour to welcome once again one of those few men that led the BMP from where it was to where it is today. Please stand for Mr. Richard Edmund. I'll stand for you. I will stand for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for those warm words. Thank you for the invitation to come here. And let me congratulate you because you here in the North West achieved a wonderful and astounding victory at the European elections then where our number one man on your list in the North West, the party chairman, Nick Griffin, got elected with his colleague over there in Yorkshire and Humberside, Andrew Bronze. And that victory was in itself politically an earthquake, but beyond the political earthquake was the fact that it gave heart to millions of people in this country. That victory, uh, first of all, Andrew Bronze, I've watched the television uh, watch the television news that night, was stuck by a television, and there was Andrew Bronze, and he gave a very, very fine speech. Andrew Bronze <laughs> is a man who's been, he was a recently retired lecturer in law from Harrogate College, and he has spent most of his adult life in our nationalist politics, and he gave, Andrew Bronze was the first of our candidates to get elected to the European Union Parliament. And Andrew Bronze gave a very, very dignified speech. I watched it on the television, I watched the BBC News. And when Dimbleby, who was comparing a group of um, journalists on the table, commenting on the, the political results of that uh, uh, election, when they first of all said, oh, the BNP won a seat. And goodness gracious me, goodness gracious me, and a Peter Sellers accent, possibly. <laughs> goodness gracious me. And then somebody explained to Dimbleby, this man, this candidate who's been just elected for the British National Party for the European Parliament, Andrew Bronze, is a recently retired lecturer in law and politics at Harrogate College. Dimbleby's head practically spun off his shoulders and he <laughs> said, what? A recently retired lecturer in law and politics. And then when these, later on in the evening, and they were sort of digesting this new, uh, this new phenomenon, that, our, that this party of ours which um, this decade, this millennium, and again I congratulate the first victories this millennium that this party obtained of ours, this party of ordinary, decent British people, up against all the opposition of these newspapers, the Lib Lab and Con, the first breakthrough that we achieved this millennium was again in the North West, in Lancashire, where in Burnley in the year 2002, you know, the wonderful people got elected into Burnley and we've, we've been winning ever since. We now have nine and a hundred um, borough councillors. Sharon Wilkinson is not only a borough councillor in Burnley, but she's also a county councillor for Lancashire. We have three county councillors. Last year, we got our man elected onto the Greater London Assembly. And this year, we've gone up another big rung up the ladder. And when coming back to Dimbleby on the BMP, looking at Andrew Bronze, giving his very dignified speech. Um, was that Morley Town Hall they counted the votes? M Morley Town Hall, yeah. Hmm? Or was it in Leeds? Leeds, okay, Leeds. Um, giving his very dignified speech, uh, and they were, the, 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 the pundits were uh, digesting this new development in British politics. One of these lefty creeps got, got up and said, oh, no, no, you, must, you, know, mustn't, you know, mustn't, mustn't talk any more about Andrew Bronze. We must move on. Um, don't talk about them. Don't talk about them. Make out they don't exist. And Dippleby said, no, no, you're mistaken, he said. The British National Party has achieved something here. They've got a million people voted for that party in this country. A million people. And we have to acknowledge that. And things will be different, Dimbleby uh, predicted. And then later on the evening, because there was all that recounting, 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 um, Nick Griffin um, got elected. And next day I was going back home, having watched this television at friends of mine home. Um, I was sort of thinking about it. I was very physically tired, having spent up all the night and the excitement and the tension. And I thought, this is not only a political breakthrough, as per Dimbleby and all these talking heads on television, this has given hope and heart to millions, not just us. And that is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, never think that us in this room are the only people who are concerned about what's happening in this country. There are millions and millions and millions of people who look on with anguish 
at what's happening to our little Britain. We're a small, you've got a globe. We're vanishingly small on a globe. Our little island, so important, with its wonderful history and what we've achieved. But it's pretty small on a, on a globe of the world. Um, <coughs> we have given heart to millions who look with anguish. And the, the great thing about winning these elections is, as well as the satisfaction of having councillors and, and your MPs, is we give hope and heart to millions. And we're in business, basically, we're in business to give hope to people. Because millions think, I've had it said to me hundreds of times, I've knocked on thousands of doors, and they said, oh, nothing you can do about it, mate. They're practically sort of dying in front of you. They're sort of bursting into tears. You reach for your Kleenex. You know, come on, mate, get off your, get off your ankles. <laughs> and what is needed is these victories. And it was a very satisfactory, uh, very, 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 very satisfactory. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this party of ours... Um, was set up to defend the rights and interests of the British people. And you don't need me to tell you, we have never been more needed. And I will say here what I think is obvious to anybody who lives or works in or near one of these major British cities. <laughs> civilization in this country, civilization in the big cities is in the process of collapsing is in the process of collapsing um, I don't say that lightly I don't say it easily and I, I wish it wasn't the case but I <coughs> let me put it this way I'm old enough like a number of people in this room the older ones of us there's, adva there's advantages in being a certain age I'll say a certain age you are looking at me sorry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> madam I've got four eyes because I need them. I can, I'm, I'm being blinded by this light, madam. Take my assurance. I'm blinded by the light. And all your shining eyes looking at me. But there's a certain advantage to being a certain age. I am old enough to remember a civilised Britain. And I know that a civilised Britain is possible. It's possible because we used to have it. And if we had it, it's our intention to return to those conditions. Yeah, That's yeah. what this party was set up for. And I wouldn't have come the 200 miles up from London. I wouldn't have go out of my house if I didn't think and know that this party, um, with our campaignings, and this is the latest leaflet we're putting out, put the British people first, no to crime, no to immigration, no to EU rule, no, no to high taxes keeping foreigners in luxury. If I didn't think this was possible, I couldn't attend these meetings. But I know that if we, the British people, who are very, very good people, if we stick together and remain disciplined and use our God-given brains, I have no doubt we can sort out the problems of this country. Basically, the British people have got a political problem. Lib, Lab and Con, Liberal Party, Labour Party and Conservative, Conservative as in confidence trickster, have failed and betrayed this country and we have to start afresh and we've made <coughs> progress. But I'm old enough to remember a civilised Britain. I remember a Britain when we didn't have armed police on our streets. No, no armed police. We were proud of the fact that our police officers did not have a pistol or a machine gun because we didn't need it because we were such a raw abiding society. I remember a Britain where the word mugger was not in our vocabulary because there were no muggers. I remember a Britain when there weren't millions of foreigners pouring into our country. I remember a Britain that was a civilised country. I remember a Britain when the shopkeepers were all white British. You know, man and woman, a couple of kiddies maybe, living upstairs in the flat, running the shop down below. I remember that Britain. The shopkeepers were all white British. I remember a Britain where the bus drivers were all white British where the doctors and nurses in the hospitals were all white British. I remember that, and I am... Um, I regret the passing, to put it very, very mildly. I regret the passing, to put it very, very mildly. I remember a Britain where everybody had a job and was expected to work. I remember all that. I remember all that. So, where did we go wrong? Where did things go wrong? We have been... We have the politicians of the old parties have failed the country. Labour Party, Liberal Party, Tory Party, makes no difference. They all opened the door to the rest of the world, mass immigration into this country. Labour governments, 
Tory government, makes no difference. They've all opened the door to massive